We come now to the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. I've grouped them together because they're similar and they deal with a piece of time that is uh, overlapping. Um, in order to get a clear understanding of what's going on here, you have to understand that after the fall of the united monarchy with the civil war and the division of the divided monarchy, um, Assyria is the first of a mighty series of mighty world empires that attempt to uh, gobble up all the other nations in their sphere. And they do succeed in utterly annihilating the ten northern tribes of Israel. The two southern tribes in Judah hold out and they survive the Assyrian onslaught, but they fall to the subsequent attacks of the kingdom of Babylon, which succeeds the Assyrians. And uh, under the Babylonians, uh, their king Nebuchadnezzar conquers the whole of the Middle East, essentially, and uh, establishes a huge kingdom, a Babylonian empire, and the people of Israel are caught up in this and they are taken captive. Um, the city of Jerusalem is destroyed. The walls of the city are broken down. The temple that was built by King Solomon is destroyed. Um, the chief people, the, the princes, the rulers, the educated people, the aristocrats are taken away into captivity in Babylon. Um, the land is, uh, is, is left pretty much um, all by itself. And uh, there's chaos for, uh, for about 70 years. And towards the end of that period of time, um, Ezra and Nehemiah have an important role to play in helping to bring Jews out of Babylon back into the land of Canaan, back into Israel, and rebuilding and reestablishing the institutions there. Um, and let's take a look at the storyline. Uh, after the northern kingdom falls to the Assyrians, it ceases to exist. Judah, the southern kingdom, falls to the Babylonians and is in captivity for 70 years. And uh, during the 70 years, uh, the Jews are weeping for uh, their city, Jerusalem, the holy city, for their holy land, for their kingdom, for their, for their uh, ancestral home. They want to go back. Um, Ultimately, Babylon, the, the kingdom, the empire of Babylon, is attacked by the Medes and the Persians and eventually falls. And uh, it is eventually the Persian king who ends the captivity of the Jews and allows them to return home. Ezra and Nehemiah lead subsequent movements of restoration back to Israel from Babylon. Um, with the permission of the king of Persia, they go back. They have permission to uh, cut trees and collect building materials, repair the walls of the city of Jerusalem, rebuild the temple, do all of the things that need to be done to put the city back together again after its horrible uh, fate at the hands of the Babylonians. Um, and this is a very significant time for Israel because um, just as the Exodus experience from Egypt led to the establishment of the nation of Israel. So this uh, return to Israel after the captivity represents the restoration of Israel after the captivity, the Babylonian captivity. This idea of the Babylonian captivity becomes very significant, not only in the history of Israel, but in the, the, the psyche of the Christian church. And the idea that um, if people are not faithful to God, he will remove his protection and they will be inundated by outside forces that will then dominate them and hurt them and punish them. And uh, that they cry out to God for help and then God delivers them and restores them and puts things back together. And uh, now the question is, will they be faithful or will they be faithless? The map shows some of these uh, great empires. Uh, you see Egypt there, uh, kind of in the center of the map, and then you see the Sinai Peninsula to the east, and then going up to the north and the east, the land of Israel. The cities of Israel, Hebron in the south, Jerusalem, Shechem, Samaria, all the way up to Tyre and Sidon in the north. Um, this is, uh, this is the land that Israel conquered after the Exodus, but uh, 
the Assyrians, you notice the extent of their empire there, came against this and, and, and uh, were quite successful in a campaign against Egypt. And uh, uh, then following them, the Babylonians. And uh, the Babylonians uh, built an even larger uh, and more successful empire than the Assyrians did. It wasn't quite as large geographically, but it was more powerful and more rich. And then uh, following them, the Persians. And uh, you can see the extent of the Persian Empire was much greater. If we continue the story, of course, we know that the Greeks came up against the Persians and eventually took their kingdom away from them and expanded it even more. And then ultimately, of course, the Romans um, conquered the Greeks. And uh, But the significant thing here is that all of this battle was waged back and forth over the land of Israel. You can see how Israel stands between Syria on the one hand and Egypt on the other hand. Um, to the east is the Arabian Desert. Nobody goes through there. And so the empires in the Fertile Crescent up around the Tigris and Euphrates rivers near Babylon and Nineveh, uh, those civilizations would sweep down into Egypt through Israel. And then the Egyptians would sweep up into the Fertile Crescent through Israel. And so poor Israel was constantly being clobbered from both sides in these huge intergalactic battles between these empires. Um, and uh, Israel got the worst of it over and over and over again. Uh, the biblical story says that the reason they did was because they were unfaithful to God. And uh, God refused to defend them from these nations as long as Israel, Israel refused to be faithful and loyal to God. Um, so once again, the storyline is a real clear storyline about relationship with God and how to maintain it and what happens when one doesn't and the consequences of disobedience and the consequences of obedience and faithfulness.